Hey there everyone, how are you guys doing today? I am Joe Marin and welcome to yet again another episode from MCOJ. Now in this video here today, I'm going to be doing a comparison video between the Google and Asus Nexus 7 and Verizon Ellipsis 7 Android tablets. Both of these devices are Android tablets in the 7 inch form factor, the Verizon Ellipsis 7 being available exclusively through Verizon Wireless with 4G LTE data connectivity, and the Google and Asus Nexus 7 being available in Wi-Fi model or with an available or optional HSPA Plus connectivity. The one we're reviewing here today is the Wi-Fi only going head to head with the Verizon Ellipsis 7 with 4G LTE. They're going to be duking it out, battling out, we're going to find out which 7 inch tablet comes out supreme, Verizon's offering with data connectivity or Google's offering with Wi-Fi only. Both of these are serious competitors in the Android tablet market and we're going to see what one stands on top in this comparison right now on MCOJ. But before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, and sit on down. Take a swig from your mobile cup of Joe. Alrighty, so here we go with my comparison video between the Verizon Ellipsis 7 and the Google and Asus Nexus 7. Again, both of these are 7 inch Android tablets, the Ellipsis 7 being available exclusively through Verizon, whereas the Nexus 7 is available through multiple carriers and retailers out and outlets. Well, to start things off, let's go ahead and talk about some design build quality aspects. With the Ellipsis 7, this is a relatively poor design. On the front, you have rather, rather large uh, top, bottom, and side bezels. It feels very heavy in the hand. It's kind of thick too, and you really can't hold it that comfortably in one hand, especially if you kind of grip it all around. It's a very wide tablet for a seven inch form factor, and it's very cumbersome to try to hold it in one hand like this. You do have front facing speakers and they get relatively loud, but they don't provide the amount of depth like I'd like them to. On the back, in terms of a design, you have this kind of faux metal or faux stainless steel brush right here, but this still is indeed plastic right here and a very cheap plastic at that. Pretty ugly camera lens right here, multiple logos from Verizon as well. Um, you do have an option to expand it via a micro SD card slot, which is nice to bump up the eight gigabytes of internal storage. But aside from that, the, dis the design and the build of the tablet is, does leave a lot to be desired, very ugly and not super practical. Now the story is very different when we move on to the Nexus 7. Although it does have rather large bezels at the top and the bottom, these side bez bezels are incredibly smaller and thinner when compared to the Ellipsis 7. Now these top bezels and the bottom bezels being this tall and this big do make the tablet very narrow and a lot taller than the Ellipsis 7. As you can see right here, the Nexus 7 does stand a bit taller than the Ellipsis 7, and because it is a narrower design tablet, it's much easier to grip in one hand like this, much easier to use a one-handed operation like so. Now we'll move on to the back of it, we have this Nexus logo with an Asus logo engraved into the back, and this nice soft touch black plastic on here. There's also a white model available with a different type of plastic used, but the black model does have this nice soft touch grip to it. We have a very uh, simple minimalistic camera lens right here, and we have dual stereo speakers on the back of the tablet, one at the bottom and one at the top. And in my use of them, I found that the Nexus 7 delivered a richer and a fuller sound and audio than the Ellipsis 7 managed to kick out. This is, the Nexus 7 is much thinner and lighter than the Ellipsis 7 as well. You can see that the Ellipsis 7 is kind of chunky when looking at it from the bottom and from the sides, but the Nexus 7, is incredibly thin all around and I, re I look at the sides of this every day I feel it and it's amazing me how light and how thin this tablet really is and that's a joy to use in the hand whereas the Nexus or the Ellipsis 7 is a bit of an annoyance to hold and to operate. Now let's talk about those displays both of them are 7 inch displays but they are very different indeed. The Ellipsis 7 boasts a 1280 by 800 HD display which kicks out text that can be rather fuzzy at times Icons and colors look decent, but it does leave a lot to be desired. The images and videos can look fuzzy at times, and it just lacks that clarity and that level of sharpness that we'd like to have on a tablet. We move on to the Nexus 7, which has a 1920 by 18, 1920 by 1800 HD, full HD display, and it looks gorgeous. I'm sorry, 1920 by 1080 display, not 1800, 1920 
by 1080p full HD display in here, my bad, uh, for the mispronouncing mis uh, that. But either way, the display on here is gorgeous. Colors really, really pop. HD IPS display technology going on right here. Colors just pop. Text, as you can see, is very, very, very crisp on here. I have never had any issues with the display here on the Nexus 7. You have around 320 pixels per inch on here, and the viewing angles are fantastic, as you can see right there. The colors just really pop out of here. They're not oversaturated like some people find on a Super AMOLED display, but we have very stark whites, as you can see, but the colors still stand out. The text, again, is crisp, and there's just a level of clarity and a level of awesomeness from the display on the Nexus 7. It's still one of my favorite displays of any mobile device, and to this day, it is still beautiful. Now let's go ahead and move on to the actual processing speeds. The Ellipsis 7 has a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor with one gigabyte of RAM, whereas the Nexus 7 has a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor with two gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and open rip or let's open up an application that both of these tablets have. Let's go ahead and load up the Google Play Store just to see the difference in speed between opening up those apps. I can find the Play Store on here. So let's go ahead and launch them both at the same time. And you can see the Nexus 7 loads it up instantly, whereas it took the Ellipsis 7 time to buffer it up. We'll go back home from that. And now let's go ahead and open up the YouTube application for both of them. And see, let's go ahead and OK for that. So let's go ahead and try that again now that we're logged into the YouTube account for that. YouTube, let's go YouTube on here. And the YouTube app opens right away on here. So you can see the scrolling is smoother here on the Nexus 7 as well. Let's go ahead and actually try to play a game here on the Ellipsis 7. And we'll go ahead and throw a game here on the Nexus 7 and the Ellipsis 7. Riptide GP2 running on both of these devices right here. And we have it load on the Ellipsis 7, but that opened up sooner than the Nexus 7 did. So we'll go ahead and test out gameplay on the Ellipsis 7 first to see how it runs. We'll test out the Nexus 7 here in just a second. So we got the game loading up right here. You can see the, t the animation right here is a bit jerky, really. It does not look that pretty. So we're going ahead and we are racing now in Riptide GP2 using our Nitrous Burst. And we're getting past these racers. And it is playable here on the Ellipsis 7. But it just feels very jerky at times. Especially when you have a lot going on with the screen. You're doing uh, tricks and stuff. And it just does seem to slow down. So like that racer kind of falls flat on his butt with the gaming. But let's go ahead and try it on the Nexus 7 to see how it performs on here. Go to Career. You can see it's navigating the menus feels a lot faster here on the Nexus 7. Tap to continue, loading up much faster. And because this is 4.4 KitKat, you have the immersive mode where you don't see the navigational bars like you did on the Ellipsis 7. It brings the full game in here without any notification bars or without your on-screen nav buttons, and it looks really great. It really immerses you fully in the experience. All the animations and everything look just gorgeous here on the Nexus 7. They're not jerky. Everything feels extremely fluid here. No frame rate issues like you have on the Ellipsis 7. It's a much more enjoyable experience, a lot smoother, a lot more fluid, and all in all, it's just a much better experience when it comes to gaming and really just using a lot of high, performing a lot of high-end tasks in general when compared between the two tablets. So in terms of processing, the Nexus 7 wins yet again. It uh, does have a better processor in here, double the RAM, and it really does show when multitasking or playing games. Now, in regards to the cameras, the Ellipsis 7 features a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back, 0.3 megapixel camera on the front. The Nexus 7 boasts a 5 megapixel camera on the back with a 1.2 megapixel camera on the front. The Ellipsis 7 really, really disappointed me with the cameras. Like I mentioned in the review, I never expect a lot from cameras on tablets, but when I opened up that camera user interface for the first time on here, and I saw that it looked like the camera wants to open, I saw that the interface looked like this, looked like something from 2.3 Gingerbread. Um, it's really quite awful. 
uh, very bare bones. You have things like auto face detect, auto capture when someone smiles, but just the overall interface looks quite horrendous and the quality is very, very poor as well. Then we go on to the Nexus 7, which doesn't have the best camera out there for a tablet, but is certainly not the worst either. We hop into it. We have a, what I really like the Android camera UI. A lot of people don't like it, but I find it very nice. Uh, very easy to take pictures. In terms of settings, you have simple things like going to the front camera, more options, picture size, white balance, scene mode. Um, you have geotagging for that. If we swipe to over to our uh, front facing camera, you can see it's much better than what we had on the Ellipsis 7. Again, not the best camera out there by any means. Take a quick selfie. First, let me take a selfie. There we go. And uh, again, it's not the best cameras out there, but it does worlds better than the Ellipsis 7. The interface is cleaner. It takes faster pictures, takes better pictures, and all in all is just a much better experience here on the Nexus 7. And that's kind of a trend we're seeing throughout this entire comparison video is that the Nexus 7 just offers a better experience throughout. Now one thing that the Ellipsis 7 does bring is 4G LTE data connectivity on here, as you can see by that 4G LTE symbol and notification bar. However, there is no 2G or 3G bands or modems built into this tablet. So that means when you travel to an area outside of Verizon's 4G LTE only coverage zone, go to an area where there's Verizon service but it's 3G or 2G, you do not, you not have data or mobile data access on here. You will have to go back to using Wi-Fi until you have access to 4G LTE again. So where I live in Lawrence, Michigan, there is Verizon 4G LTE access, but it varies sometimes. So when I would lose access, the mobile data on here would not work at all until it found the 4G LTE connection again, which is a big bummer. The Nexus 7 that I own here is the Wi-Fi only model, but you can purchase an HSPA Plus variant to use a mobile data connection with T-Mobile. And there's also one on Verizon Wireless now as well, so you can get Verizon 4G LTE on the Nexus 7 just like with the Ellipsis 7 as well. So just want to point that out there. Um, the mobile Wi-Fi on both of them worked really good. However, on the Ellipsis 7, it only has a two point, as an older Wi-Fi, we can only access 2.4 gigahertz bands, but I can access my five gigahertz band here on my home Wi-Fi network with the Nexus 7. So now let's go ahead and move into the battery life. Actually, battery life was pretty good for both of them. I was able to get through a full day of use all the time with the Ellipsis 7. Uh, if I was careful, I was able to get through a couple days with the Nexus 7. So both had relatively comparable battery life, but I do have to give the top to the Nexus 7. Now let's go into software. Uh, the Ellipsis 7 is running Android version 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, as I will confirm right here, which is many versions old as the latest version of Android is now 4.4.3 KitKat. We go over here to the Nexus 7 go to our settings about tablet we are running android version 4.4.2 kitkat right here which is not the very latest version of android just yet but it's still up there and so this is a nexus device you will be ensured to get the latest updates to android as they come out and kitkat brings a lot of improvements especially being a lower power consumer than jelly bean was it means you don't need super high-end specs to have a very smooth and fluid experience and that would really help out the Ellipsis 7 here. However, we are stuck on 4.2.2 Jelly Bean with no real word on an upgrade to 4.4 KitKat in any time in the future. So in terms of software, you gotta give the credit to the Nexus 7 here because you have all the improvements with 4.4.2 KitKat, all the improvements with KitKat really, but you're stuck in Jelly Bean land here on the Ellipsis 7. And the final category, price. The Ellipsis 7 is start selling unlocked on Verizon for $249 whereas the Nexus 7 starts selling for $229. For $20 less, you get a better tablet in pretty much every single category, and that's a hands-down winner. The Nexus 7 is a better tablet than the Ellipsis 7. That's it, that's final. Ellipsis 7 is a decent contender, but the Nexus 7 just stands out on top every day, all day, every day. And guys, that's all the time we have for this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe. Please comment below, let me know what you thought of this comparison video. If there's two other devices you'd like to see me compare on MCOJ, comment below as well. Let me know what you think of the Ellipsis 7 and the Nexus 7, or if you just want to say hi, do that in comments as well. Um, be sure to follow Mobile Cup of Joe on Twitter, which is at Mobile Cup of Joe. Follow me personally on Twitter, where I am at Joe Marine. And make sure you subscribe to Mobile Cup of Joe on YouTube. Make sure you never miss the latest episode. And if you like the video, I really would appreciate it if you'd go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. 
and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.